holy angels leading their flocks out of darkness. So how beautifully put, how so true. Teachers, you inculcate the constitutional values. We are holding constitutional positions. We apply the law. We guarantee rights. That is our role. But all that would be meaningless if the constitutional values are not ingrained in the students. You don't have to say this is the constitutional value I am now ingraining into you. But the way that things are conducted, for example, fraternity. Fraternity finds a prominent place in our preamble. But that is the one main thing that you practice in school. Your concept of uniform is based on that. People come from different hues and then they, you know, exhibit a fraternity which is what is going to hold our country in good stead. So I was suggesting, I don't know whether as a judge I can suggest, but I think it is a positive suggestion uh, to you, uh, Ms. Uh, Chitra, and Ms. Parthi and Mr. Raju. Why not the Delhi Tamil education schools, if not already done, display both in English and vernacular? the preamble to the constitution and the fundamental duties the two are one article 51a and the preamble and if once in a week in your morning assembly one teacher and one or two students can be associated to read it and you can have a small note for the meaning all of it will talk more than five to seven minutes but i think it will be a tremendous education for the students i make the suggestion to you for you to consider What did uh, the divine poet Thiruvalluvar say? Two of his Thirukurals come to my mind and both apply to the uh, teaching profession. Selvatul selvam sevich selvam achelvam selvatul yellam talai is what he said. I always wondered why he preferred the power of hearing over eyesight. But I think there is a very good reason for it. <coughs> with lack of eyesight, you could get away with people assisting you. But without, you know, the wisdom and education, it will be very difficult for you to take decisions. And every day, it is what you impart, which is going into the ears of the children. And that is why the great poet rightly said, Selvatul Selvam Sevi Selvam. Of all the values, I would rate the power of listening the highest. And that is at the head of all values, he said. Equally powerfully, he said, Karka Kasagara, Karpavai Katrabin, Nirka Adarkutaha. I'll translate it. Learn, by all means, learn, but learn well. And after you learn well, stand by how you have learned and what you have learned. That again originates from you, teachers. And it is such a privilege to have been invited to, uh, you know, inaugurate a workshop of this nature and to be in your midst uh, this morning. I am also very happy that the workshop covers several topics which are of importance. And one of them I found very interesting was 21st century skills essential to prepare global citizens of tomorrow. I don't want to go into how sound, high sounding things like artificial intelligence much needed. That will be part of your curriculum. But there are so many other things which I am sure you will uh, impart in this course of continuing education which teachers are having. We in uh, the judiciary and in the legal profession have continuing legal education. Otherwise, we will get outdated. That is the whole purpose of this workshop. They say if Marconi's uh, uh, radio could get outdated with the advent of television, and thank God with the introduction of FM, it's got uh, revived. Otherwise, at one stage, we had all forgotten the radio. So there is constant need for updating. We do it in the legal profession. Judges have the judicial academies. Lawyers have groups which have part continuing education. And with this online now, it is happening on a very large scale. 
This one particular topic, 21st century skills essential to prepare. The dimension that I want to briefly deal with is the dimension of, you know, methods and measures which will help you lead a good life. Not a comfortable life. Certain essential life skills. I have always wondered, even to ride a car, drive a car, you have driving schools. And that is because you will have to drive on the highway without any accident, either to you or you be responsible to cause an accident. But there are no schools, there are no institutions to teach you how to live. So this topic of 21st century, and the only way we can do it is through the schools which catch the students young. They get you into one roof. And while imparting the curriculum, which itself is onerous, but I am sure the students will find it interesting if you can diversify it by introducing a few topics which will help him or her identify his swadharma. They say that, uh, you know, swadharma is what the innate trait in you which if you practice and if you do a profession similar to the swadharma that you have, you will excel in it instead of a herd mentality. I don't want to use cliched phrases which have been said time without number. Swadharma, they say, is the innate trait. Uh, the Japanese have a nice uh, phrase for it, ikigai. The, the ikigai. 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 You identify the ikigai uh, in the individual. Now, what is it that I would have been, you know, want to be taught specifically, in which we, with the hard knocks of life, in the last 30 years, one has learnt. Most essential are the interpersonal relationships. I'm sure at some stage you must be doing it. It's always called man management. It's also we call woman management. Now that you are in a majority. That is very important. Somehow that is being uh, missed. Fellowship can achieve so many things. You don't have to please everybody. That is not what I mean at all. It is just people come with different views, different tastes, a capacity, a leadership quality to assimilate them, to deal with them, you know, to, to, to counter them, to reason out with them. I said those kind of skills you need to impart. At least they must be conscious that this is an essential skill going forward in life. They should also be good listeners. They say that it's only when you listen well that you are able to absorb what the other person says and it is only to those good listeners the person speaking also will be respectful. I say this because it very often happens. Our mind tends to wander. And today there is so much of material on mindfulness. I don't want to attach any religious significance. It's not irrespective of the religion you perform. You may believe, you may not believe. You may practice, you may not practice. But I find a lot of, you know, goodness in the concept of mindfulness. It does help you focus on the task at hand. They say you must multitask, you must do this, but I find if you take up one and do it well, you are able to bring an insight into it and I am sure some part of the discussion will be on that. If not in this workshop, you could have, uh, you know, people uh, proficient in that, speak to the teacher so that they could pass on. Wide reading, of course, it's any subject which is useful need not be a fiction alone. There are a lot of non-fiction 